to the Natural Health and Healing Show with one of New England's leading nutritionists, Mark McCullough. The show is brought to you by the Good Health Stores in Hanover and Quincy. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 with your health and nutrition questions. Now, here's Mark. Good evening and welcome. Indeed, this is a true reality program, Larry. (laughs) Unfortunately, the reality we're going to be speaking about tonight is uh, a very, a very uh, powerfully, um, let's put it this way, it's a very frightening reality. It's It's a very powerful attention getter because we're going to be talking tonight about your immune system. We're going to be talking about uh, the what, what many are anticipating as the swine flu pandemic. You know, and uh, there's so much to talk about regarding this frightening issue. But I wanted to uh, lead in this evening with uh, something that I found on World Net Daily today, September 13th, 2009. Just a few pieces of information. France is already responding to the pandemic level six complete with military-enforced mandatory vaccinations. They're going to be mandatory throughout Europe. According to the International Health Regulations of 2005, the World Health Organization and the United Nations become the controlling agencies um, of the U.S. in the event of a declared level six pandemic, a world pandemic, and are entitled to control of this country under martial law under the pretext of fighting a pandemic emergency. And uh, the refusal of World Health Organization mandated vaccine has been uh, criminalized. Police can actually use, if needed, deadly force against what are referred to as criminal suspects refusing vaccination. It sounds surrealistic, of course, and uh, unfortunately it is not. It's, it's absolutely uh, it's, uh, mind-boggling. Nonetheless, uh, what we're up against, of course, is we're up against the uh, anticipated, much-awaited H1N1 swine flu. And, of course, many health experts are certainly gravely concerned, obviously, about the impending return of this H1N1 swine flu, which uh, first landed on our shores last winter, toward the end of the winter, and... Uh, Some are estimating that uh, it's going to come back with a vengeance. Of course, swine flu is not uh, the only flu. There are, of course, uh, over 200 different strains, various strains of viral flu or influenza that uh, attack us each and every year, over 200 different strains. But this is the one that uh, we're really, really, I think, uh, most challenged by, immunologically speaking. Uh, many experts, of course, are claiming that the uh, the death count will rise. You know, normally, most folks are not aware of the fact that normally we lose about thirty to 35,000 people a year to influenza, and that's an average per year. Uh, many experts are claiming that uh, we're going to lose as many as 90,000 lives this year to the H1N1 swine flu. And uh, the hospitalization rate is, is expected by many to rise from 200,000 to 600,000. More than half a million of us will be hospitalized with this particular flu, according to many experts. And uh, there are an awful lot of folks, of course, that uh, I think need to gather more significant, effective information. Uh, You know, what are we given as far as empowering information from the Center for Disease Control? Uh, Four things. Cover your nose, wash your hands, avoid uh, touching your eyes, and stay home if you get sick. That's it. That's it. We thank the CDC for the empowerment. Wow. Um, They're obviously uh, in a hurry-up mode right now, testing vaccines. They've only been testing these vaccines, by the way, since July, if anybody's curious. So uh, how well tested they can uh, really administer Uh, these results over such a short window of time. Uh, Your guess is as good as mine. Um, However, uh, they claim that there will be no shortages. They're trying to target groups such as pregnant women, people who uh, live with and care for younger children uh, from the under the age of six months 
as well as health care emergency supervisors, uh, people six months to 24 years of age who are in risk of uh, compromised immune system health disorders. Uh, so they're trying to focus on folks six months to 24 years. So they tell us that that, uh, that is the first group that they're looking to vaccinate. And uh, clearly there's an awful lot of folks who are really questioning, and well they should, questioning exactly what their alternatives are, questioning what some of the really grounded scientific reality is here. How can we get a real good, clear fix on what this problem is? There's so much distortion. There's so much anticipation. I dare say there's an awful lot of uh, capitalizing that many are anticipating off of this problem. Uh, you know, whenever there is solution, uh, solution, whenever there are solutions made available, I should say, to such a dire problem, there's going to be a tremendous, tremendous amount of money to be made. And that is a fact. Whether you like hearing it or not, it's a reality. Nonetheless, with all of these confusing and consternating issues uh, and all of this incredible terror in the backdrop, what exactly are your alternatives? What are the best choices for you and your family? What are the best scientific and the best educated approaches to managing a potential pandemic issue such as this. Something tells me there's a lot more you can do than cover your nose, wash your hands, avoid touching your eyes, and staying home from work if you get sick. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So stay with us. We're going to talk about the impending swine flu. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health. We're all about smart, simple nutrition. Let us help you keep your resolutions and achieve all your personal goals. Lose weight, feel better, and look your very best today. Thanks for listening to the Health and Healing Show. We hope to see you soon. In our area, we are fortunate to have one of the top martial arts schools in the country. Personal Best Karate. Personal Best has been recognized for their community involvement, professional staff development, character building programs, and exciting educational curriculum. Personal Best stands at the top of their industry. Five locations offering personalized professional instruction. Not sure if karate is right for you? At no obligation, the staff at Personal Best will guide you in a private introductory program to see if karate is indeed the right fit to help you achieve your goals and meet your needs. What does karate at Personal Best teach you? Character building, success habits, helps you get in shape, relieve stress, self-control, setting goals, and of course, self-defense. Personal Best goal is to create successful, contributing members of society through the practice of the martial arts at Personal Best. Mr. Chris Rappold is, of course, the founder of Personal Best Karate. He tells me his greatest joy of all is to see the personal transformation in each and every student. Bring out your best with Personal Best Karate. Telephone number 508-285-5425. That's 508-285-5425. Locations in Norton, Foxborough, Southeastern, Franklin, and Taunton. That's Personal Best Karate. Correct. Many experts are gravely concerned about the spread of the swine flu. Some estimate that the virus could claim as many as 90,000 lives and half a million hospitalizations. Hello, this is Mark Mincola. Please join me on Thursday, September 17th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset as I present Nutrition for Maximum Immunity. Together, we'll explore safe, natural strategies to help you and your family build immunity and effectively fight the flu. For tickets, call 781-383-3393. That's 781-383-3393. Call now. Space is limited. All righty, welcome back. You want to remember one thing, folks. If you forget everything else, you want to remember one thing. Sneeze into your sleeve. Yeah, that's it. I, uh, I can't help myself. I saw President Obama uh, during one of his recent uh, press conferences who was asked um, about, of course, the, uh, the swine flu and about the spread of flu and, and all of the dire concern. And the president essentially said, please, above all else, sneeze into your sleeve. 
Anyway, I can't help it. Cover your nose, wash your hands, avoid touching your eyes, stay home if you get sick, and sneeze into your sleeve. They can't do better than that. How empowering. Thank you so much for that information. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about this and give you an awful lot more information than that. Of course, that's what we're here for. Uh, We're dealing, of course, with 200 common cold and flu virus strains per year here in the U.S., as we said earlier. One billion cases of cold and flu annually. One billion cases of cold and flu annually. Annual cost of $80 billion. $80 billion. The rhinovirus accounts for 35% of the one billion cold and flu cases in America. And the rhinovirus is, of course, um, it's a respiratory virus. And influenza hospitalizes, as we said earlier, 200,000 Americans per year. Influenza currently kills about 30 to 35,000 of us every year. And uh, as we said, uh, this year's swine flu is projected by many to reach pandemic proportions. Some experts estimate 600,000 hospitalizations, 90,000 losses of life. So uh, we're looking at some real powerful numbers here, whether it manifests uh, as is anticipated we will soon find out because uh, flu season is uh, officially officially active in the middle of October. So according to the Center for Disease Control, when it's mid-October, that is when the official flu season is initiated. Uh, that's when they really uh, warn folks that there is generally a fast spread, and uh, that's uh, what we have to generally gauge the time frame by. However, that being said, uh, if you go to the CDC site, the Center for Disease Control is currently noting an uptick in the spread of the swine flu in the southeast as we speak. So the Center for Disease Control is tracking an increase, a pretty dramatic uh, increase uh, in many school systems, etc., throughout the southeast and as far north as Washington, D.C., as we speak. So it is, it is making its way around, it, even though it's only mid-September. Uh, it appears to have jumped the gun here, and uh, I don't think we're going to have to wait until mid-October for flu season to really begin. Something tells me things are moving fast, and uh, we shall see exactly what we shall see. And uh, many, of course, have the burning question of, okay, well, it's all coming down the line. What do we do about it uh, other than covering our nose, washing our hands, avoid touching our eyes, and staying home if we get sick? We've got to be able to do better than that. Um, You know, folks have the burning question about vaccine. We talked a little bit about vaccine uh, at the outset of the broadcast. Of course, the best flu vaccines are estimated to be about 65% effective due to what's called shape-shifting antigenic drifting, serial passaging, because viruses, of course, are proteins and their DNA is capable of shifting and changing. Um, So uh, the effectiveness of vaccine is generally thought to be about 60 to 65 percent. Excuse me. The current swine flu vaccine is untested except for, as we said earlier, a few trials that actually began in July. And the the, uh, current the current trials uh, only address 21-day cycles, only address 21-day cycles of adverse effects, okay? So we're talking about the possibility of having uh, side effects from something long-term, downline. Well, they're not, they're not really evaluating it on that basis. So when you're trying to somehow make a decision about estimating whether this is the safe way to go, the best way to go, and that's really, let's be honest about it, that's all people care about. What is the right thing to do here for myself and for my family? What is the safest way to go? That's obviously an individual question each one of us has to ask ourselves and ultimately come up with a response for. Uh, But for all intents and purposes, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a vaccination process that is still... uh, containing thimerosal. Okay, most folks are not aware of the fact that flu vaccine does indeed still contain mercury, 49% mercury. Also, it's got gelatin protein, which is highly allergenic. It also has renin, which is highly allergenic, polysorbate 80, which is squalene, uh, autoimmune disease uh, triggering uh, uh, study, a number of different animal studies 
have uh, noted that the polysorbate 80 has the ability to create autoimmune diseases in animals. Uh, not to mention, it also contains formaldehyde, which is a very well-known carcinogen. It also has tritax, which is a what's referred to an industrial detergent. An industrial detergent. As far as the flu mist version of the vaccine, the flu mist, which they're encouraging young people six months to age 24 uh, to go out and get the flu mist version of the vaccine. Well, the flu mist version, hey, how about that? It's a live vaccine. That means the virus is still alive in there. Okay, anybody knows anything about antigenic drifting or serial passaging? Of course you don't, and they know that you don't, but you will in a moment. Antigenic drifting in serial passaging is when proteins alter their properties. They mutate, folks. Okay, living viruses can mutate. The other part of that process is you cannot determine or detect or predict exactly what they will mutate into or when they'll mutate. So if I get a live flu mist vaccine, uh, it's very conceivable that the DNA in that protein goes through changes, mutations, six years, 10 years, 20 years down the line. And who knows what it will mutate into. Nobody can guarantee you that it will or won't turn into whatever. You're just kind of rolling the dice. Once again, those folks that are being recommended to get the flu mist, ages six months to 24 years. I, uh, if it were asked of me, would decline. Okay, um, now the other aspects of this, too, is that we've got to be careful about um, the U.S. courts have recently, very recently granted legal immunity to all manufacturers from all liability under the present pandemic alert. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. The U.S. courts have recently granted legal immunity to all manufacturers from all liability under the present pandemic alert. The pandemic alert scenario also allows for the bypassing of all FDA regulation. Now, most folks would scratch their head and say, well, that can't be real. There's no way that that, that, that could possibly happen. But unfortunately, it did already happen in 1976. The last pandemic vaccine program was in 1976. It, too, was virtually untested and did contain thimerosal, polysorbate 80, formaldehyde, etc. There were 4,000 legal damage suits filed, some for paralytic Guillain-Barre syndrome and some for death. And once again, you can, uh, you can check that out. There's, it's a matter of public record at this point, but uh, more people died from the vaccination than the flu in 1976. There were 500 cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. And again, we're talking about a, a, it can be fatal. Guillain-Barre syndrome can be fatal as it attacks nerve lining, uh, causing in many cases paralysis and suffocation. Those affected are simply unable to breathe. There were 500 cases directly linked to the 1976 vaccine. That vaccine may have increased the risk of contracting GBS by eight times, according to scientists. Here's the key. The vaccine was withdrawn by the federal government just 10 weeks into the vaccination process. And the United States government was at that time forced to pay out millions and millions of dollars to those affected within the uh, framework of those 4,000 lawsuits that we talked about. So it's my, my key point here is, again, I go back to the obvious point that these are very powerful questions that each of us has to answer personally. All I'm saying to you folks is don't simply find an answer without doing research. Don't arrive at a simple conclusion without really doing your homework. Yourself and your family 
really need to count on the benefit of your wisdom. Research it. Look into it. You need to think about the prospect of boosting your immune system. You need to think about supporting your immune system so that it can do what it was designed by Mother Nature to do. You have very specific viral killers in your body. You have a number of different powerful... You've got, well, you've got a trillion lymphocytes, white blood cells in your body, made up of uh, helper T cells, suppressor T cells, killer T cells. You've got 10 million trillion antibody molecules produced by B cell lymphocytes. You've got an army within you, 10 million antigens that produce antibodies. Okay? You have antibodies that are antimicrobial. You have antibodies for cold flu defense, for eye, ear, nose, throat defense, specifically for intestinal defense. You've got all kinds of first responders, immune globulin M in your body. Your body is constantly on the, on the alert. It's on the lookout for anything that looks like it doesn't belong inside your system. You've got interferon molecules. You've got bone marrow tissue, spleen tissue, thymus tissue. Interesting uh, point, back in the 80s, a lot of folks remember the Life Extension book bestseller. It was a bestseller for months, for months. Dirk Pearson and Sandy Shaw, Life Extension, great book. Huge book, about 600 pages. In that book, at one point, they mentioned the researchers from Life Extension made a point, and I never forgot it. It said that if you maintained the same level of immunity throughout your entire life that you did at age 21 when it was peaking, when it was peaking, your immune system would keep you alive for 800 years. And it just shows you just how significantly your immune system drops off after it peaks. It shows you biochemically how sensitive you are to a lot of the food allergies, to a lot of the chemicals, to the stress. And it shows you realistically how important it is to keep your immune system operating at the highest possible level. Now, many of you have really worked at building immunity. And you know the difference between taking care of yourself versus being careless. Big difference. I mean, I see... You know, 27 years, I see, I've seen a steady parade of all of you coming in my office, sitting before me and saying, you know what, when I work at this stuff a little bit, I don't get as sick. I don't seem to have the same level of immune vulnerability. I don't seem to go down to colds and flus quite as easily as I used to. Well, it's no wonder. You have a remarkable immune system, as we pointed out, that if you could keep it operating at a high level, is going to keep you operating a long, long time. Do you know the average child in America today, the average, the average school-age child in America today, average, I said, has experiences an average of 12 12, I said, 12 respiratory infections every single school year. That's average. Now, think about how compromised the immune system of most of these kids is. It's, it's, it's incredible to me. You know, you're, you're starting to develop a young, strong, healthy body. You peak at 21 immunologically, supposedly. But these kids are not really getting the full benefit of immune support. A lot of these kids have immune globulin deficiencies. A lot of these kids really have very poor immune systems. Isn't it curious that we're supposed to peak at age 21 and the CDC is recommending children 6 months to 24 years of age are on the target list for those who should be first vaccinated? The habits, the diets, the, the lifestyle, the way we live compromises the immune system. 
and it's going to have an awful lot to say about who gets the swine flu and who doesn't. It's going to have an awful lot to say about who fights effectively and who succumbs. But don't think for one minute that you don't have an army within you. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Many experts are gravely concerned about the spread of the swine flu. Some estimate that the virus could claim as many as 90,000 lives and half a million hospitalizations. Hello, this is Mark Mincola. Please join me on Thursday, September 17th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset as I present Nutrition for Maximum Immunity. Together, we'll explore safe, natural strategies to help you and your family build immunity and effectively fight the flu. For tickets, call 781-383-3393. That's 781-383-3393. Call now. Space is limited. This is Catherine from Jaro Formulas. We're happy to have continued our relationship with Mark Mancola in the Health and Healing Show. And we're happy to announce a new product from Jaro Formulas called Jaro Cell. We all know that as the body ages, it heals less rapidly and becomes frailer. Often the body is unable to process enough nutrients to repair weakening cartilage and protein fibers. A very important element in building and repairing your body is silicon. But unfortunately, as we grow, you may have difficulty absorbing adequate silicon from your diet. But now, thanks to a product called Jarosil, you can be sure to get your share. Jarosil can give you the silicon you need to support your bone health, bone mineral density, and in addition, Jarosil strengthens and beautifies your hair, skin, and nails. Jarosil is available now in a synergistic liquid formula that also includes boron and zinc. Ask for Jarosil at your local health food stores. Or for more information, you can go to the Jaro website, which is www.jaro.com. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health, proud sponsor of the Health and Healing Show. For 31 years, we've been helping the South Shore communities eat well, get healthy, and stay fit. Just remember, everything Dr. Mark recommends is available at remarkable savings at Good Health in Quincy Center and Route 53 in Hanover. One-stop shopping for the finest selection and best quality of foods, supplements, and gifts. Thanks so much for listening. Alrighty, welcome back. It's, of course, uh, the time of our it's broadcast Candida. when Candida is here. It's the time of Candida. I like that. The season of Candida. Yes. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Great, great. Just celebrated 10 years with my hubby. Yeah, you had a birthday so recently, fun. an anniversary. Yeah. This is a very important time it's of year all for around you. that time. Great. <laughs> right. Well, congratulations on both counts. Thank you. I know he's always listening, so I'd like to say hi. Congratulations, Mark, wherever you are out there in Radio Land. We have a really big event coming up. A big event, yes, indeed. Thursday. I'm really excited that you're doing this because I do a Google search online, what to do about the swine flu and everything. Every hit yep. is vaccine, vaccine, yep. vaccine, yep. vaccine. Yep. Well, no, actually, there's more to it as well. You can cover your nose, wash your hands, avoid touching your eyes, and stay home if you get sick. Oh, and the other one is sneeze into your sleeve. Nice. Don't forget those. Write those down, folks. You're going to want to know those things. Those are, uh, those are earth-shattering recommendations that are designed to empower you. Right? That's awful. <laughs> yeah, look at Larry. He's got his T-shirt over his nose in there. You're safe, Larry. I saw online it's just as important as washing your hands as wearing clean underwear in case you get into an accident. Okay, very good. Well, you can add that to the list. We have a rim shot for that, please. <laughs> oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Great advice. That's why I was so blessed to have you right here. Well, on this this, this coming Thursday, September 17th, we Big will be event. at the Red Lion Inn in uh, Cohasset at the uh, Lions Hall function room from 7 to 9. And uh, it's all about uh, nutrition for maximum immunity. That's right. And we're going to we're going to go into great detail helping folks prepare for this reality in ways that Unfortunately, uh, they're not being educated about, you know, and I think that's the real shame of all of this is that once again, we have a wonderful, wonderful American public that's really getting, uh, they're getting short shafted here, so to speak. You know, they're not getting the full picture. They're not getting the best of information. They don't get both sides of the information. I think there should be open debate. 
I think that there should be uh, there should be open forums. I think the more conversation, the more the more education, the better. Um, I think, unfortunately, that uh, folks are getting very limited, very control oriented, very filtered information, and I think it's just a, a travesty because um, I think people deserve an awful lot better. Yeah. So we're going to try our best. Barbara Fisher, you, you are yes, on. Barbara Lofisher. She's Fisher. doing a wonderful job. She's I actually, she's thoughts. wonderful. Yes. And she's actually the one that uh, was interviewed by World Net Daily. And again, just to, just to reiterate here, uh, that Barbara Lo Fisher brings this issue up. France is already responding to pandemic level six complete with military enforced mandatory vaccinations are going to be mandatory throughout Europe. According to the International Health Regulations 2005, the World Health Organization, the UN, become the controlling agencies of the United States in the event of a declared level six pandemic and are entitled to control of this country under martial law under the pretext of fighting a pandemic emergency, refusing a World Health Organization mandated vaccine has been criminalized. Police can therefore use deadly force against criminal suspects refusing the vaccine. So... So much for choice. So much for choice. Again, I think that these are, you know, these are the outer parameters of where problems like this can indeed go. I just don't want anybody to to be uninformed, to be surprised if it ever comes to this. Who knows where it's going to go? Nobody can tell you. Um, so it's virtually unpredictable. But these are the outer parameters that we need to discuss, talk about, think right. about. We need to talk about the complete picture as far as the safety, the cleanliness or lack thereof of these vaccines. Uh, how well studied and how well reviewed they are or aren't. Right. Um, I think we need a complete spectrum here. Also, you know, there's some natural medicines, which we're going to talk about this evening and a lot on uh, thir- this coming Thursday night, uh, that have been studied under World Health Organization uh, um, restrictions and have been studied uh, under the, the auspices of uh, the uh, Center for Disease Control. Dr. John Cabara, formerly from the um, uh, Michigan State University researcher, who in 1982, that's a long time ago, 1982, while researching at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, found an effective natural medicine against the swine flu. No one knows about it. It's crazy. Now, why has it been taken to such a different level from last year? Like, what's so different this year? Well, again, you know, like anything. Scare tactic. Well, but, but you know, something. I, well, first of all, there's a lot of, of that uh, to that question that's probably unanswerable because there's who knows the complete three dimensional depth and the full ren- range of possibilities when it comes to issues such as this. However, the simple answer, Candida, is that viruses spread, pure and simple. They're contagions. And these contagions are essentially um, going to run a course of spreading. And they start off, in some cases, spreading moderately. And then the next thing you know, they're spreading uh, pandemically. Mm -hmm. So there's anticipation that what we experienced at the end of last winter is going to come back with a a pandemic vengeance. Mm -hmm. Who Who can tell whether that's accurate or not? We do know this. You go to the CDC site right now. And uh, they're noticing an uptick in the flu and the swine flu throughout the southeast as we speak, uh, making its way from the southeast up to uh, the uh, area of Washington, D.C. So we do know it's moving. And the fall and the winter is usually when this hits yep. most? Well, as I say, the, the, uh, the official s- uh, flu season begins the middle of October, so October 15th, 16th, thereabouts. So that's when the official season is usually declared by the CDC. Right. So we do have now solutions. You have to come to the September 17th to find out more about Yes, indeed. As we say, sure. we're going to be presenting every aspect of this house. in packed house. We've already got uh, quite a few folks pre-signed, but yep. again, this Thursday, the 17th of September, uh, at the Red Lion Inn in Cohasset. If you're interested in information, 781 383 3393. There's a whole lot of threes there, huh? 781 383 3393. And we'll get you on board. It's uh, $20 in advance to be the best $20 you've ever invested. 25 at the door, and space is limited. And there, there's a lot of folks uh, getting in on this, so uh, you want to do not delay. But we have some good solutions, you know, and Good Health Natural Foods is actually going to be there with us on Thursday. i got to tell you, now, this isn't just because uh, we love them and they're our sponsor and good friends and all that business. But you know what? They are so 
on board with, with making a difference in the South Shore community. That's right. That's what they're all about. Um, because we'll, we'll do our research. You know, I talk to researchers, friends of mine, Dr. Kabar, I mentioned. I constantly talk to folks around the country about what the best medicines are, what the best natural approaches are to fighting viruses such as the H1N1. There are viable solutions, natural medicines that really work. And preventable. Preventable as well. And, and that are all based on science, based on real powerful, co- compelling studies. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that. But Good Health Natural Foods is always an open door for us. When I call them and say, there is a specific product called XYZ. Can you get on board with this and make sure that the folks have it available? Boom, they move on it instantly. It's the only health food store in America. You know, and folks at the South Shore who are listening, you're fortunate. This is the only pipeline in the United States that that's happening with. There's no place in America that's happening. Where we do our research, we do our groundwork, we find out what's out there for your benefit, we get it in good health, it's available to you, and then we've got presentations such as this to really tie it all together for you. That's right. So what are two things folks should have in there? Well, there, you know, know, one thing, bodies, yeah, especially. absolutely, no, good, and I think one of the things that we uh, are going to talk about in a little bit here, and we're going to talk about a lot on Thursday, is what I already sort of mentioned, the, the work that Dr. John Kabar, my dear friend Dr. Kabar, did back in 1982. Uh, when he found that uh, that indeed there was a very simple fatty acid, a fatty acid called lauric acid. Lauric acid is, of course, a natural fatty acid from coconut oil. And there's a product that's at Good Health. Now, there's two products at Good Health Natural mm-hmm. Foods. One is called Monolaurin, M-O-N-O-L-A-U-R-I-N. The other one is called Lauricidin, L-A-U-R-I-C-I-D-I-N. These are both available good health because when I called them about them, they said, boom, let's get them right in, just like we said they did it. So these were found to be successful at turning back the swine flu and the bird flu. Influenza A, by the way, that's what these are. These are influenza A strains. And Dr. Kabar back in 1982 found them to be effective at turning back the various strains of influenza A, including bird flu, swine flu, etc., so there is one solution that we've had since 1982, documented at the Center for Disease Control, that virtually nobody knows about. And anyone who's been listening to your show, those are the two things you've We always. know it. We know it. Well, and, we, and the other thing that uh, we're going to put on board here, too, is something I just found recently that I think is extremely important because mm. it's hard to get little guys, the little kids out there, right. the two- and three-year-olds, the, the, the six-month-old. The, the six it's so difficult for these little guys and gals to really take a pill. So what do we do for them? Well, we found a great solution for them. There's something called Flu Stop. Flu Stop is a spray. It's a spray. And the Flu Stop spray is actually a remarkable, remarkable medicine that was researched extensively uh, at the National Academy of Sciences, clinically proven by Dr. D.S. Liu, who did all the SARS research for the World Health Organization uh, back in 2003. And what he did is he actually tested it under World Health Organization antiviral standards, found out that it inhibited what's called hemagglutin in A and the, uh, the NA as well. So the HAs and the NAs, the neuraminidase, uh, these, are, these are big terms or big words, but all they basically are is they're, they're the agents that allow for the replication of influenza. So his research back in 2003, World Health Organization standard research, and uh, it was really uh, powerful research that found 82.9% reversal of all symptoms associated with these flus in three wow. days. Yeah. Three days. So, you know, the key spray. here, yeah, it's a spray. Spray. yeah, the key, here, absolutely, the key here is, is that kids are, are going to struggle with a pill. Okay, mom and dad, of course, can take the monolaurin, okay, or the loracidin, easy to take for an adult. But for children, different story. Yep. So we can't leave them out in the cold. We found something equally effective, something that's very powerful in a spray form. And again, it's uh, something that Good Health Natural Foods brought in. Great. So they do have it available. It? Um, it's actually um, a company from up in Canada, but it's called the Flu Stop Company, F-L-U-S-T-O-P, Flu Stop. So Flu Stop Spray and, uh, as we said, uh, the monolaurin, really important to have on board. And a lot of other things we're going to talk about because... I say influenza A is labile. It's labile. That means it's vulnerable due to its, its mutability. It changes all the time. 
So it changes. In other words, you give it a, a pounding with, uh, with one natural medicine and it takes a good hit. Then it changes. Okay? And as it adapts and changes, you hit it with the second one. So I say, folks, at least have two or three of these natural medicines on hand gotcha. because you can whack it with one medicine. It'll change and adapt. You whack it with another one. Eventually, you're going to wear it out. So what, what do you do with the monolaurin and lauricidin? Well, I say uh, monolaurin and lauricidin, they're, they're one and the same. So you can use either of those, not both of those, monolaurin or lauricidin, because those are going to give you that lauric acid from coconut oil to kill this virus. Number two, the kids, of course, are going to use the spray, okay? And the flu stop spray works really effectively. But I say that if you keep, for example, one other agent on hand, for kids, I usually recommend the Sambucal, S-A-M-B-U-C-A-L. So for the kids, they're going to use the Sambucal and the flu stop. Mom and dad are going to use something like the monolaurin, like we said, and maybe something along the lines of the cold care, K-O-L-D-K-A-R-E. Cold care is another another uh, very powerful antiviral agent. It's called andrographis. It's an herb called andrographis. The Chinese have done extensive studies about how powerful it is as an antiviral, but it's very, very effective against influenza. A lot of great Chinese university research on it. Great. So good stuff. And by the way, good health is located where? Two great locations, Mark, <laughs> <laughs> in Quincy and in Hanover. Quincy location is 1627 Hancock Street. Phone number there is 617-773-4925. And then they have their Hanover location, which is at 219 Columbia Road, right on Route 53 in Hanover. The phone number there is 781-826-0808. For all things natural. Good health, natural food. And in this case, for all natural antivirals, it's good health, natural food. So uh, they're on board with us. They're going to be there with us. Are they going to actually sell the products at the event? They're going to they're gonna have a table in the back. And there's gonna, and the other thing is we should mention idea. there's going to be a lot of uh, food samples, free food samples. Right. There's going to be a good health is really bringing the whole wagon uh, on they Thursday night. They're, they're amazing. So uh, you want to come and meet uh, Nick Mincola. He's going to be working the good health table. So nice. uh, a lot of folks hear me talk about my son, Nick. And uh He's, of course, uh, enrolled in acupuncture school, That's right. and uh, he's helping work, work at our offices, doing a little stress management work for us. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the work he's doing, which is cranial electrical stimulation work. Yeah. It's, it's great, great stuff. Wow. Cool and stuff. And going to have some uh, free samples. Jaro Formula is going to have some free samples there. Absolutely right. right. That are immune enhancers. So uh, they're, they're on board trying to help you support your immune system. So we've got a, a concerted community effort here between uh, ourselves, Good Health Natural Foods, Jaro Formulas. It's going to be a great night. I'm so excited. And we look forward to it. Yeah. And we also, November 7th, have the one-day seminar that we, we do, do for indeed muscle have that. testing. We do, we do indeed. So, I'm looking forward to that as well. And we have some past students that have called, and they're really interested in great. Uh, doing a little refresher. So. Great. I look forward to it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank too. you so much. All Thank righty. you. All right. We're going to take a short little break and be right back with advice for your immune system naturally. Stay tuned. Hi there. This is Mark Cole, the Natural Health and Healing Show. I know that so many of you out there are passionate about the latest cutting edge nutritional information, would like to go on to that next level. I'm proud to announce that our new natural health care offices and cohesit are offering personalized nutritional consultations. At Santi Holistic Healing, you'll experience an informative, individualized nutritional consultation by one of my finest personally trained nutritional experts. Your consultant will test you for specific food allergies and supplements. Together, you'll chart out a personalized, optimal nutritional roadmap that will detail your healthiest foods and nutritional supplements, even specific doses. If that's not enough, we also offer relaxing healing massage at Santi Holistic Healing. Whether it's nutritional consulting or healing massage that you're interested in, we at Santi Holistic Healing are prepared to give you the healing experience of a lifetime. Call us at 781-383-3393. That's 781-383-3393 for the healing experience of a lifetime. This is Catherine from Jaro Formulas. We're happy to have continued our relationship with Mark Mincola in the Health and Healing Show. And we're happy to announce a new product from Jaro Formulas called Jaro Cell. We all know that as the body ages, it heals less rapidly and becomes frailer. Often the body is unable to process enough nutrients to repair weakening cartilage and protein fibers. A very important element in building and repairing your body is silicon. 
But unfortunately, as we grow, you may have difficulty absorbing adequate silicon from your diet. But now, thanks to a product called Jarosil, you can be sure to get your share. Jarosil can give you the silicon you need to support your bone health, bone mineral density, and in addition, Jarosil strengthens and beautifies your hair, skin, and nails. Jarosil is available now in a synergistic liquid formula that also includes boron and zinc. Ask for Jarosil at your local health food stores. Or for more information, you can go to the Jaro website, which is www.jaro.com. Many experts are gravely concerned about the spread of the swine flu. Some estimate that the virus could claim as many as 90,000 lives and half a million hospitalizations. Hello, this is Mark Mincola. Please join me on Thursday, September 17th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Red Lion in Cohasset as I present Nutrition for Maximum Immunity. Together, we'll explore safe, natural strategies to help you and your family build immunity and effectively fight the flu. For tickets, call 781-383-3393. That's 781-383-3393. Call now. Space is limited. Alrighty, welcome back and welcome, Bill Hall. How are you, Bill? Is he still out there? And uh, Bill, did you uh, maybe maybe he ditched us? Uh, it doesn't sound like anybody's on there. Okay, we thought he was on, couldn't hold on, was obviously busy. So, uh, Bill, if you want to call us back, we're here waiting for you. Um, anyway, key here is is we sort of pointed out with Candida there is a number of different viable solutions that we want to pay close attention to that help immunomodulation, help build that immune system back up, natural antibiotics, antifungal, antiprotozoal, antiviral agents. And again, one of the things we mentioned is, of course, the uh, monolaurin, which is a uh, powerful antiviral, antifungal, antiprotozoal, antibacterial. Uh, and again, it was researched back at the Center for Disease Control in 1982, uh, also, beta-glucan, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and uh, that's the cell wall of Baker's yeast. And again, it's not a negative fermentation. There were a number of different uh, National Institute of Health animal studies in 2004 that showed that beta-glucan was very powerful uh, in the face of these uh, influenza A's. Um, we mentioned uh, flu stop spray. I think the kids are going to do really, really well with that one. And we uh, we got Kathy on the line. Kathy, how are you? Hi. Welcome. Hi, Dr. Nicola. Um, I have a very question for you. Sure. Um, what would you suggest a person takes if they ha- for the H1N1 if they have an autoimmune disease? Um, a lot of natural substances I look into or read about um, say that they boost the immune system. Mm-hmm. And with an autoimmune uh, disease, I don't want to uh, um, boost the immune system. It's already overactive. Yeah, I, it's a great question. I think some of these agents, even the ones that we're talking about tonight, if you take lauric acid, for example, lauric acid doesn't really boost the immune system. What it does is it actually negotiates, um, it's an antiviral, antiprotozoal, antifungal, antibiotic. But it's not uh, like an, it's not really a specific immune enhancer. Okay, so it's an antiviral, antibi- antifungal, antiprotozoal, antibacterial. Um, now, something like beta-glucan, different story. That's more of an immune mediator and a more, an immune modulator. So uh, I wouldn't recommend that for autoimmune folks. Um, but I would say things like um, the loracidin or loracidin, however you want to pronounce it, along with the uh, monolaurin, those are probably your best bets because those are nothing more than food grade, just like you could eat coconut. It's not going to hurt you to eat coconut. These are food grade natural medicines that have their own natural properties as antibiotics, antifungal, antiprotozoal, and antivirals. But they're not going to, you know, they're not going to mediate immunity from the, from the perspective of boosting your immune system. Okay. What about the die-off that I've read about on the label, the die-off possibly that you can uh, get from it? Well, to be honest with you, any time you kill anything off that doesn't belong in the body, any time you kill off, like a yeast, for example, if somebody has yeast in the body, a yeast infection, and uh, they, they use a natural medicine or, or, or even an antibiotic, you know, uh, to kill these yeasts. Um, a lot of folks, of course, are using diflucans and things like that. You're still going to have a die-off in, invariably because if you kill something that's in the human body, one of the first things that happens is they actually they, they detoxify in the body. They, they release toxins, the, the endotoxins. A lot of these bacteria, yeasts, and viruses, when you kill them, just, just before they die, they release toxins. 
Um, and in many cases, they increase the replication or the reproduction in the case of viruses or bacteria. So, you know, whenever you're doing battle with these microbes, there's going to be some degree of die-off. I think the answer for that is you lower the dose. You know, you take a low dose and work your way into an increased dose. What would you suggest to start at? Well, I think the monolaurin, you can get 300 milligram capsules. You can get 600. I would say you want to start with 300 milligrams and just take maybe one a day. Uh, and maybe over a period of a week, you, you continue at 300 milligrams a day for a week. By week two, I'd say that you can go to 600 milligrams twice a day, and you should be in pretty good shape. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, is the flu stop something you suggest also for an autoimmune problem? Yeah. You know, it's it's basically uh, got sandalwood and licorice root. The one thing I would say about that is is that uh, there have been some indications that licorice root can, enha- can enhance... Uh, and regulate immunity, the idea of, um, of, of increasing T cell production, the, the idea of, uh, of increasing some of the adrenal response. So you probably want to stay away from it. You probably want to stick with the, the uh, lauric acid, again, food grade. You know, herbs are a little different than foods. Herbs tend to have some very powerful properties that can dramatically increase T cell production, B cell production. So more immunomodulation from herbs uh, as, as opposed to the, uh, the food-grade uh, coconut oil. Okay, so stick with the, it sounds like the monolaurin. I think the it's the way to go for you, and I think you want to graduate your dose. Okay, I was looking into the flu stop, and I didn't know much about it, yep. and I, I wasn't sure which one to take. I would say monolaurin. Okay, thanks very much. Best wishes. Take okay. care. bye-bye. Bye-bye. And Bill Hall, I think we got you now. Bill, how are you? I am well, Mark. How are you tonight? Very well, thanks. I wasn't able to listen to the whole program. I was in and out of my connection, but I wanted to bring up something locally, specifically in the Pembroke area, and that's the water supply as we speak. People are doing their washes, and the clothes are coming out blue. They're also washing themselves, and their hair is coming out green. Um, An alleged acidic problem in the water supply, I, I could probably go on and on and and add to that, but I wanted to know if you you had anything to add and maybe be able to help people combat this problem. I really honestly can't tell you that I know anything about it, but I will say this. If indeed it was a a case of uh, exceedingly high acid levels, um, I would suggest that uh, folks want to pretty much steer away from it and uh, shift over to safe drinking water, Uh, you know, whether they're drinking Poland Springs has a fairly low TDS, or whether you want to move into uh, distilled water, which has a zero TDS, uh, at least for the time being. And, you know, obviously you're, you're not really advised to drink uh, tap water for the most part. Anyway, as far as the bathing, et cetera, that's, that's a tough one. But um, you, you can actually have systems put in, put in your home that actually, uh, you know, that dump an, alkali, an alkalizer into the water supply, you know, at the source. Some of them use some calciums and whatnot to try to kind of buffer the water. That's not an inexpensive proposition. But I would say, uh, first things first, as far as the drinking water goes, you, you probably want to really make sure you steer away from drinking that stuff. Um, you know, I don't have an answer for you in terms of what exactly is going on with the water, but we can certainly uh, we can find out. We can effort that and, and maybe bring in some information uh, next Sunday on it. Great. I, I greatly appreciate the input and the time. My pleasure. Be well. Take care of yourself. Have a nice night. Thank, right, thank you. you so much. Bye bye. So obviously, Bye-bye. folks who are who are living in the Pembroke area, you want to look into that water. You might want to call your uh, water department tomorrow and ask them what uh, what say they about it. Obviously, you want to steer clear from drinking that water if uh, if indeed there's uh, questions such as uh, were raised by by Bill Hall. So we'll see. We'll try to look at that and, and we'll effort it and see what we can find out for folks out there. But uh, stay away, obviously, until you have your questions answered. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Kathy's question was a really good question, the idea that, that um, folks who do have the need to avoid immunomodulating nutritional supplements uh, do have the opportunity to take advantage of a food-grade lauric acid product without really, um, without really immunomodulating that, uh, that immune system. So the idea that um, so many folks out there do suffer from autoimmune conditions and have to be very careful about jumping up that immune system. Things like licorice root and the flu stop, best avoided. 
um, even the beta-glucans, the Saccharomyces, could be the kind of immunomodulator that you want to avoid. Also, the point that I think was really important here is to increase that dose very gradually. Start at the 300 milligram, then you can go to uh, the 600 to a day after a week or so of adapting to that natural medicine. Generally speaking, we're looking at uh, the average person who's really up against this flu. If you're taking the monolaurin, you get the 600 milligram caps. You want to take four of those a day, so 2,400 milligrams if you're really up against that uh, the influenza, if you're up against the swine flu, if uh, indeed we... Uh, uh, suffer the fate that so many anticipate. So uh, 2,400 milligrams of, of that, and again, that flu stop spray is something that I think these kids are going to benefit greatly from, especially used in, in concert with the uh, Sambucal, S-A-M-B-U-C-A-L, which is really a great natural medicine as well. But uh, I think uh, I would encourage folks to try to attend our event this coming Thursday, the 17th of September. We'll be at the Red Lion Inn. That's from 7 to 9. If you're interested, and uh, again, you should be because this is going to be, I think, a real important, important event for so many folks. We're, we're looking to empower you with uh, maximizing your, your nutritional immunity in the event of a potential uh, serious, serious issue with uh, swine flu. Certainly, at the very least, influenza, which is already sort of starting to work its way around, as we said. Um, so we will be there, 781, if you're interested, 781 383 Three three nine three. I'll say it one more time: seven eight one three eight three 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 nine three. And uh, wow, this uh, hour went by fast, as they all seem to do. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for Dr. Julie Johnson, and this is Markman Cole. Even listening, of course, to the Natural Health and Healing Show, heard only on ninety five point nine FM WATD. We'll be back, of course, with you at eight PM next Sunday, as we are each and every Sunday. And until that time, remember: be wise, beware. Be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night. Thank you for joining Mark Mancola for the Natural Health and Healing Show. Call Mark each Sunday evening at 8 o'clock.